see many many women coming to him and giving a phone numbers and uh, you know uh, want to work for him or um, uh, an appropriate stuff. First, when we met, I didn't give him my number. He was with the date. So I told him, give me your number and I will call you. I wanted to see what kind of number he would give me. Business, home. If he would give me business number, I'm not a girl doing business with him. I'm not a girl doing business with him. That's an internet connection and a phone call away. I don't have sex for money. I spend time with men for money. You nailed it. Within my week number two, I was asked to book a VIP trip to Vegas for the portfolio manager and to get strippers and to talk about body rub places they could go after hours. And sometimes that included um, you know, having to book their escorts and that sort of thing. Kristen started one of New York's most successful escort agencies and became known as the Manhattan Madam. She says her agency earned millions each year. High-end prostitution is seen as glamorous. People cannot fathom why someone would pay over a thousand dollars an hour for somebody's time. Do you worry about women and him being attracted to him? No, I don't worry about that at all. Worry about I know, I know who I am and um, if a man doesn't want to be with me or I don't want to be with a man, Goodbye so, and good luck. That's right. What lie made you the most upset and how would you like to set the record straight? The lie was that I was working as an as a escort, uh, what is not true. And um, it's, it's just terrible what's going on out there. I'm very strong, I'm very confident and I could handle everything. But what I will not allow, uh, people uh, saying lies about me saying lies about my family, my husband, and um, I file a lawsuit and uh, I will file till the end because I will not allow that. She's been a model, she's done commercials. I fly! She may seem like an odd duck for a first lady, but Melania Trump is just like us. At least on first glance at her Facebook where she posts videos of beautiful beaches. And that great Aerosmith concert she attended, as well as the fun night with my two boys, Donald J. Trump and their son, Barry. The Donald is driving, his son riding shotgun. Unlike her husband, Melania is not addicted to Twitter, but some of her older tweeted photos are fun. Melania is Batwoman for Halloween, wearing a cat suit, teasing her husband, honey, see you soon. And there's this oldie but goodie, the Clintons at the Trump's wedding. Okay, maybe she's not just like us. Hi fans, it's Melania Trump. Not everyone has fans. Hi fans, I'm going to Metropolitan Gala and I'm... And not everyone goes to galas in designer gowns. Christian Suriano did for me. And I thank you, Christian. It's a beautiful job, fantastic job. You can't say Melania hasn't had plenty of training for all those state dinners she and President Trump will be hosting. Where was Melania? She was absent from the first big black tie event of the pre-inauguration hoopla. The president-elect was there. I think we're going to have record crowds coming. So was top aide Kellyanne Conway, looking glamorous in a one-shoulder winter white dress with a fur stole. Veep to be Mike Pence danced with his wife Karen. But no Melania. She stayed behind here at Trump Tower in New York. 
Melania is expected to fly down to D.C. on Thursday with her husband and the rest of the Trumps. She'll stay through the weekend and then will reportedly return here to Trump Tower on Sunday night in time for the start of her 10-year-old son Barron's school week. White House historian Kate Anderson Brower. She's put her foot down and said she's not going to move to Washington immediately because of their son. But I do think that eventually she'll feel the pressure to move to Washington to live in the White House because it's what the American people expect of a first lady. A writer for USA Today is catching some heat for an article titled To Be or Not to Be a First Lady. According to Melinda Henneberger, there are lots of ways to do the job. <laughs> in June 2015 vividly, surrounded by our family and speaking to an audience of millions, Donald promised to campaign on behalf of those who feel the system is broken and does not work for them, those who just want a fair shake, an opportunity for a better education, a better paying job, a better future. He pledged to restore integrity to Washington and respect for America abroad. This is not an ordinary campaign. It is a movement. A movement in which people feel included, inspired, and involved. I have seen it firsthand. We are deeply grateful to the millions of Americans who believe in my husband because they know he believes in you. He believes in America and he will make fantastic president of this United States. I come here today to talk about my husband Donald and his deep love and respect for this country and all of its people. I have come here to talk about this man I have known for 18 years. And I have come here today to talk about our partnership, our family, and what I know for sure in my heart about this man who will make America great again. I know exactly what that means. I grew up in a small town in Slovenia near a beautiful river and forests. Slovenia is a small country that back then was under communist rule. It was a beautiful childhood. 
my parents were wonderful. Of course, we always knew about the incredible place called America. America was the word for freedom and opportunity. America meant if you could dream it, you could become it. When I was 10 years old, we learned that a man named Ronald Reagan was elected president of the United States of America. We heard of what he was saying and doing. President Reagan's morning in America was not just something in the United States. It began to feel like morning around the world, even in my small country. It was a true inspiration to me. Later, I lived in Milan and Paris, working hard as a fashion model. I worked with people from all over the world. Fashion is a business of glamour, but is, it is also hard work. There are ups and downs, high highs, and ridicule, and rejection too. I loved my work, and as a young entrepreneur, I wanted to follow my dreams to a place where freedom and opportunity were in abundance. So, of course, I came here. Living and working in America was a true blessing, but I wanted something more. I wanted to be an American. After a 10-year process, which included many visas and a green card, in 2006, I studied for the test and become a U.S. citizen. It is the greatest privilege. It is the greatest privilege in the world. I'm an immigrant, and let me tell you, no one values the freedom and opportunity of America more than me, both as an independent woman and as a someone who immigrated to America. Love for this country is something we immediately shared with when I met Donald. He loves this country and he knows how to get things done, not just talk. He certainly knows not just talk. He certainly knows how to shake things up, doesn't he? <laughs> He knows how to make real change. Make America great again is not just some slogan. It is what has been in his heart since the day I met him. Over the years of our marriage, I have watched my husband grow more and more concerned as he sees American workers suffer. I have watched him get frustrated as he sees parents struggle to care for children while working outside the home. I have watched him as he sees over and over again policies that make our country less strong, less secure, and less safe. Every time my husband learned of a factory closing in Ohio or North Carolina or here in Pennsylvania, I saw him get very upset. He could see what was happening. He saw the problems and he always talked about how he could fix them. My family is truly blessed. The most important thing we have in our family is health and love and loyalty. Donald has built, <laughs> Donald has built a very successful company. The privilege to go to work each day to do a job that he loves alongside of his adult children this is a great blessing for any parent. He had a great and fulfilling life. But Donald knew he could not sit by any more and watch what was happening in our country. And that is when this campaign, this movement, began. Yeah. <laughs> As Donald travels the country, he has asked some simple but very important questions. What kind of country do we want? 
Do we want a country that is safe with secure borders? Yes. yes. Do we want a country where every American gets a fair shot? Yes. yes. Do we want a country that honors our Constitution? Yes. Do we want a country that honors life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness? Yes. Do we want a country that respects women and provides them with equal opportunity? Yes. Do we want a country where every child has access to a good education? Yes. Do we want our children to be safe and secure and dream big dreams? Yes. Yes. Do we want a president who is beholden to no one but you, the American people? Yes. Do we want a president who is a fighter for us and will never give up? Yes. Then we want Donald Trump to be our president. People have asked me, if Donald is the president, what kind of first lady will you be? It will be my honor and privilege to serve this country. I will be an advocate for women and for children. Let me, let me tell you a little bit more about what that means to me. I'm a full-time mother to our son, Baron, an incredible boy. As his father travels around the country running for president, I'm with our son. We talk a little bit about politics and a lot about life, homework, and sports. <laughs> Baron has many privileges and advantages. We know how fortunate we are. Still, I have the same conversations with my son that many of you have with your sons and daughters and nieces and nephews, grandchildren and godchildren. I want my little boy to know that he is blessed to have been born in a country that values individual freedom and constitutional democracy. I want our children in this country and all around the world to live a beautiful life, to be safe and secure, to dream freely of love and a family of their own someday. We need to teach our youth American values, kindness, honesty, respect, compassion, charity, understanding, cooperation. I do worry about all of our children. As we know, now social media is a centerpiece of our lives. It can be a useful tool for connection and communication. It can ease the isolation that so many people feel in the modern world. Technology has changed our universe. But like anything that is powerful, it can have a bad side. We have seen this already. As adults, many of us are able to handle mean words, even lies. Children and teenagers can be fragile. They are hurt when they are made fun of or made to feel less in looks or intelligence. This makes their life hard and can force them to hide and retreat. Our culture has gotten too mean and too rough, especially to children and teenagers. It is never okay when a 12-year-old girl or boy is mocked, bullied, or attacked. It is terrible when that happens on the playground, and it, it is absolutely unacceptable when it's done by someone with no name hiding on the internet. We have to find a better way to talk to each other, to disagree with each other, to respect each other. We must find better ways to honor and support the basic goodness of our children 
especially in social media. It will be one of the main focuses of my work if I'm privileged enough to become your first lady. I will also work hard to improve everyday life for women. The women in America are incredible. They are strong, intelligent, generous, committed, determined. With opportunity, women will advance and achieve. But some women have been left behind. I see that. We cannot call ourselves a fully developed or advanced nation when 50% of our women live in poverty, when 16 million are without health insurance, when too many are choosing between basic needs like rent, food, and health care. This cannot be. We cannot afford to have more of the same. We must break with the failures of the past and embrace a future that is worthy of this great nation and her beautiful people. We must win on November 8. And we must come together as Americans. We must treat each other with respect and kindness, even when we disagree. I will be there to support my husband's efforts to help all Americans when he is president. Donald Trump will make America fair. He will make America safe. He will make America prosperous. He will make America proud. And yes, this man I know so well, Donald Trump, with your help and God's grace, will make America great again. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless this beautiful country.